John here guys and today we're talking about the Mobula 6 HD. This is the higher resolution cousin to the extremely popular and awesome Mobula 6 that we have right here in side by side. So if you need a little clarity, check the similarity. Now, <laughs> these do have the same size motors, 0802. I have the race version of the original Mobula 6, which is 25,000 kV. This is the more subdued 19,000 kV version, which works very well with this combination. This is the newer design of the motor that is a unibel and not the two-piece. That actually is quite nice. Um, this has a similar power system on board. Notably, though, it has a crossfire receiver. You can see the Immortal L kind of sticking out. There's not really a great mounting solution that they give you for this, but I just kind of wound it through the canopy and just left it like that. You have a spare set of props, screwdriver, prop removal tool, this little control board for the HD camera right there, and a spare set of these excellent uh, fan props. You have a set of these batteries uh, that comes with these 250 milliamp happy models. Uh, a one at a time charger for it right here that plugs into a USB. And of course the always very good instructions on how to bind it up and do all that stuff right there. Take a look at close, let's take a close look at the pod itself. Look at that large lens on there. I'll show the weight difference of this uh, compared to the original Mobula 6, the non-HD version right there. This has the very small but very excellent Runcam Nano 3 on board. And this of course has the Runcam Split Nano 3. Um, this is FR Sky SPI receiver, so not gonna have a ton of range on the original, but on this new version, uh, there's a variety of receiver options and the one that I went with was Cross Fire. So that will allow me to be able to use this or any other Crossfire compatible radio. Uh, let's just keep on looking. You can see that Crossfire Nano receiver installed under, under there. You can get to the bind button if needed, but you never really need to with Crossfire, which is one of the reasons I, I love it so much. It has a generous amount of pigtail there. Let's take a close look at the new motor bell design. Ooh, quite handsome. Check out that motor bell right there. Unibell design, really quite handsome. It is black with the little red accents on the inside of the spokes. Um, very cool. You can see that it is your all-in-one board under there, and then right underneath it, you have the Runcam split board. This separate board is used to control this HD camera. Um, right on the underside, on the right side, right there is where the SD card plugs in. You can see that it's sat in there. Always double check that after a hard landing to make sure that it has not come loose. Because this also has a 200 milliwatt transmitter that's built into this formula and it doesn't have the greatest looking antenna. It's kind of this weird little dipole thing right there, but you know, it'll give you a little bit of extra range. Um, and most notably also it has the Runcam Split 3 Nano, I believe that's what it's called. This is the newest tiny HD camera that fits in a nano form factor, but as you can see, the lens is much, much larger on this model. Um, that allows you to have beautiful, incredible HD recording on board this thing. Um, but it is not without compromise because this does add quite a bit of weight. Uh, and what does that do? That actually makes it a little bit easier to fire very smooth and very slow. But it robs you of a lot of that great power. While this one could be a racing powerhouse, this one is more of a smooth, tiny, tiny cinematic craft. So it's going to help you get those very smooth movements, but it will eliminate some of the ability to do like power loops or other power moves. If um, you can see in some of these clips, I go from the top of my stairs down to the bottom. I really have to mash the throttle up hard to keep from hitting the floor. Speaking of throttle, this thing doesn't take off till you get like 70% throttle. You really have to give it a lot of power to even get it in the air. Now, once you're up in the air, you know, it flies pretty well, pretty smooth. I was able to navigate comfortably a lot of very tiny gaps 
but because of the extra weight, it really does take away a little bit of your throttle resolution because you only have about 70 to 100% throttle to play with. Um, the other thing is that this really reduces the flight time. I was getting about a minute, 20 minute, 30 uh, flight time on this. So flight times are gonna be very short even if you are flying low and slow. But what flight time you do muster out of this thing is really, really nice HD footage. The footage in the goggles looks improved as well. If you ever flew any of those run cam splits, you know that the goggle feed really is better than your average analog camera. Now in the past, that came with a little bit of latency issues, but that was never an issue for something of this size because you're not gonna be flying 80, 90 miles an hour with this. You're gonna be going like 10 or 15 miles an hour on this slow puppy. So if I had to fly inside of a home and get some HD footage, I really might be grabbing this thing. If I had to go outside to a playground and fly around, you know, nieces or nephews or kids or whatever, I might grab this thing because it's not gonna do any damage. It's very small, it's very light. A little bit of wind might bother it a bit, but this is a really great option if you wanna get some micro HD. I'm actually gonna be comparing this to a much larger craft with the Vista on board very soon, so stay tuned for that. Are you better off getting a, a micro quad with a Vista to fly indoors to get your HD footage? Or are you better off just getting one of these that is less than the price of that? What do you think, guys? Thanks.